orbital count and watch as Falcon 9 transports the Cosmos SkyMed satellite into orbit. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition and liftoff. In Volca and full. Go Falcon, go Cosmo. Vehicle is pitching down range. M1D chamber pressures are nominal. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying the Cosmos SkyMed satellite to a polar sun synchronous orbit. Power telemetry nominal. Now during ascent, we tilt the engines and that's what we call gimbling. And that turns the rocket horizontally. That's what we call a gravity turn. We're still going up, but we're now also heading horizontally away from the launch pad. The rocket typically needs to go Falcon about- Falcon 9 is supersonic. We need to go about 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth. Max Q. And there we heard the call out for max Q. We have now passed through the maximum aerodynamic pressure. This is the largest structural load on the vehicle. And with that, we do have five events coming up back to back. They'll happen within seconds of each other. And these events include the first stage uh, making its way back to landing zone one today. So we'll have Miko, main engine cutoff, stage separation, a flip of the first stage, SES-1, or second stage engine Impact start one, burn. and then followed immediately by the boost back burn on the first stage. Again, that's five events happening within seconds of each other. We should get some good views of these happening. Again, that is Miko, stage separation, S1 Vehicles flip. Vehicles on a nominal trajectory. Good call outs there. So stage one flip, SES-1, and the boost back burn coming up here in a few seconds. Nico. Stage separation confirmed. And back to Stage one, boost back startup. And some incredible views from the ground cameras. We actually got to visually see Miko stage separation and see the first stage flip on your screen. That was incredible to see. Now what you're seeing on your screen on the left-hand side is the first stage uh, currently in its boost back burn. That is the first of three burns to make its way back to land. And on your right-hand screen, we do have the second stage engine lit up and so far looking really good on nominal trajectory. Stage one, boost back shutdown. And we heard that call out that the boost back burn has ended. Now in a few seconds here, we should see the fairing halves on the second stage being deployed. Got some awesome views here. The left-hand screen is showing the first stage with the grid fins deploying on your screen. Bearing separation confirmed. And we heard that call out and visual confirmation on your right-hand screen that the fairing halves have deployed. They're now making their way back to Earth and we will attempt to recover them with our recovery vessel named Bob today. Incredible views today. Got some great ground views of the vehicle as it is making its ascent. 
And we are T plus four minutes and 23 seconds into today's mission. And we're currently in the first of two planned MVAC burns for satellite deployment. At T plus six minutes and 11 seconds, you should see on your screen the first stage is entry burn. That entry burn will be the second of three burns needed to make its way back to landing zone one today. And for the entry burn, we relight three of the nine M1D engines. And that starts with the center E9 engine followed by the E1 and E5 engines. And that helps to slow the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. And we need to slow the vehicle down to reduce- Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. Great call outs, everything's looking nominal. And for that entry burn, we do need to slow down the, the vehicle uh, to reduce the re-entry forces. Uh, that helps us to recover and reuse the first stage. You can see on your left-hand screen, those grid fins that opened up. Those help to guide the vehicle back as it makes its way to its landing target. And again, today we are attempting to land at landing zone one. This is back at land. We need three burns to get us there. We've already completed the boost back burn and we're coming up on the entry burn here in just under 30 seconds. Stage two is still looking great. On your right hand screen is a view of the MVAC engine on the second stage. Stage one, entry burn startup. We heard the call out and you can visually see on your screen that the entry burn has begun on the first stage. Again, this helps to slow the vehicle down as it re-enters back into the Earth's atmosphere. It's only about a 20 second burn. Stage one, entry burn shut down. And we heard that call out for entry stage burn. Stage two FTS has saved. Heard the call out that the entry burn has completed and you can see that the engines have shut down on your left hand screen. That is two of the three burns. The last burn will be the landing burn. You can see in the background stage of your left. Stage one FTS has saved. <laughs> you can... Vehicles are on nominal trajectories. Good call outs there. You can see the land in the background view of the first stage as it's making its way back to landing zone one. Stage one, transonic. Stage one, landing burn. The landing burn, wow, incredible views of this landing burn of this first stage. Let's see if we can touch down on landing zone one today. to see we have touchdown of Falcon 9 at landing zone one this is our 104th recovery of an orbital class Terminal rocket guidance. and that includes first stage landings for both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy and speaking of Falcon Heavy today's flight marks the first time that we have reconfigured a Falcon Heavy side booster to a Falcon 9 mode which is pretty awesome now, next up, we will have the shutdown of the MVAC on the second stage. It's coming here in about 10 seconds. And that is called SECO 1, or second stage engine cutoff 1. SECO 1. Just heard that call out for Seco one just waiting for Nominal a call. orbit insertion. And there it is. We got a confirmation of good orbit. Now the mission isn't over just yet. The second stage is now embarking on its first coast phase. And after the coast phase, we will...
And back start up. And shut down. There, we got a quick view. Just waiting for confirmation of good orbit here. Nominal payload deploy orbit. And great news, we just had SES-2 and SECO-2. It was a quick three-second burn. We also got confirmation of a good orbital insertion. The Cosmos SkyMed satellite is still attached to Falcon 9 second stage and payload deployment is planned to occur around T plus one hour. And as a reminder, the mission today is for our customer, Talus Alenia Space, and the constellation is owned by the Italian Space Agency and Ministry of Defense. To help us better understand the capabilities of the Cosmos SkyMed constellation, here's an explanation from the Italian Space Agency's president and head of programs directorate. The Cosmos SkyMed second generation is a constellation of four satellites equipped with the synthetic aperture payload, able to acquire images in any part of the Earth's surface with an unprecedented resolution and image quality. The Cosmos SkyMed satellites, like the optical systems, are able to operate during the night and in presence of clouds. This is thanks to the specific frequency used for the acquisition. The antenna is uh, totally new and it is able to acquire uh, simultaneously images at a very big distance between them and the data acquired contain a lot of new information with respect to the past generation. For the better use of the satellites and the exploitation of data, we have developed a new control center and processing center in Italy. This will enable the development of new science and new services and applications for the benefit of citizens, institutions and entrepreneurs. Cosmos SkyMed constellation is not only very uh, important technical instruments in the field of Earth observation, but it's also important uh, support to the strategy of Italy to international collaboration. Thanks to Cosmos SkyMed over the years, and even more will be in the future with the enlargement of the constellation, we can establish uh, collaboration with other countries to share use of data provided by the constellation and to enlarge the coverage of the planet with other instruments offered by, by partners. I'm talking about so far, for example, Argentina, we plan in the future to do collaboration with Israel, and so on. Also very important is the fact that we use Cosmos SkyMed as third-party contributor to the Copernicus uh, program of the European Space Agency and the European Union. In this way, we offer important strategic and uh, precious data to collect with our constellation, also to other partners, to other producers of data for the benefit of Europe and uh, the rest of the world. If you're just now joining us, we had an on-time launch at 6.11 p.m. Eastern Time, followed by successful ascent, stage separation, first stage landing, and two second stage engine burns. Now, the booster that supported today's Cosmos SkyMed mission successfully landed for the third time back on land at landing zone one. And we have just one more major milestone coming up, and of course, that is the deployment of the Cosmos SkyMed payload from Falcon 9's second stage. And we're coming up on that in a few seconds here, and we've got a great live view. Payload deploy confirmed. Incredible view of the Cosmos SkyMed satellite drifting away from our Falcon 9 second stage. That is visual confirmation of payload deploy. And that will also bring our webcast to a close. All of us here at SpaceX want to give a big thank you to our customer, Talis Alenia Space, for entrusting us with today's mission for Italy's space.